This is a video in clinical medicine from the New England Journal of Medicine. Providing positive pressure ventilation with a face mask and a bag valve device can be a life-saving maneuver. Although seemingly simple, the technique requires an understanding of the airway anatomy, the equipment, and the indications. Developing manual skills is necessary to provide adequate face mask ventilation. While endotracheal intubation is frequently the definitive airway management approach for patients in respiratory failure, it is not always feasible. In these circumstances, ventilating a patient with a face mask can be an invaluable temporizing measure. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate the equipment and technique used to provide positive pressure ventilation with a face mask and a bag valve device. Face mask ventilation is used in patients with respiratory failure but who are still spontaneously breathing and patients with complete apnea. Face mask ventilation can be indicated after the induction of general anesthesia the administration of neuromuscular blocking agents, narcotic overdose, cerebrovascular accidents, cardiopulmonary resuscitation, and other situations in which spontaneous breathing is failing or completely ceases. Face mask ventilation is rarely contraindicated in patients with respiratory failure or cardiopulmonary arrest. However, caution is advised in patients with severe facial trauma and open eye injuries. In addition, foreign materials such as gastric contents and blood in the airway may lead to fatal aspiration pneumonitis. In those circumstances, alternative approaches including immediate endotracheal intubation or tracheotomy may be necessary. There are many types of face masks, varying in design, size, and construction materials. Transparent masks are preferred because they allow for inspection of lip color, condensation, secretions, and vomitus. Face masks consist of three parts, the rim, the body, and the connector. The rim of the mask provides the seal with the face. Many masks have an inflatable cushioned rim, which creates a better seal with facial contours. Some masks have a malleable body, which can be molded to the face, thus reducing dead space. Masks equipped with a ring with hooks can be used with a mask strap to better hold the mask on the face, but may prevent rapid removal of the mask, for example, when suctioning the oral cavity is necessary. The connector of the mask is a standardized 22 millimeter diameter orifice and connects the mask to a bag valve device. To maintain a good seal, it is imperative for the mask size and shape to conform to the facial anatomy. This is particularly important in the pediatric population. Thus, several mask shapes and sizes should be readily available. There are a variety of bag valve designs available. All have a self-inflating bag and a non-rebreathing unidirectional valve. The valve is designed to function during both spontaneous and manually controlled ventilation. Because bag valve devices can operate without an oxygen source, it is important to ascertain that supplemental oxygen is flowing through the bag valve device when indicated and available. Bag valve devices can be equipped with an oxygen reservoir of varying design. If the reservoir bag fills, oxygen is flowing. Oxygen flow through bag valve devices with a tube reservoir can be confirmed by listening to the sound of gas flowing. The purpose of these reservoirs is to maximize the delivered oxygen concentration. A bag valve device's capability for delivering positive pressure ventilation should be tested before use. This can be achieved by sealing the bag valve device connector with the thumb and squeezing the bag with reasonable force. If it is difficult to compress the bag or if air is forced between the connector and the thumb, positive pressure can be delivered. Whenever possible during face mask ventilation, suction should be readily available. Airway management adjuncts such as oral or nasal airways may need to be used. Before beginning face mask ventilation, it is prudent to examine the patient's oral cavity when possible. Smaller dental prosthesis or other foreign bodies can be swallowed or aspirated. One may consider leaving full dentures in place to provide a better mask seal.
The most common method to hold the mask consists of placing the thumb and index finger on the body of the mask while the other fingers pull the jaw forward and extend the head. The middle and ring finger are placed on the ridge of the mandible and the fifth finger is placed behind the angle of the mandible. The tongue is the most common cause of airway obstruction.